Hi everyone, this is Dr. Blake Bloxham from Fowler & Bloxham Medical and I'm here today to do another patient uh, walkthrough result video. These are the videos where I take a patient, I perform a hair transplant on and we go through his or her case. So these videos, as our, our loyal viewers know, uh, always have a theme. And the theme of today's video is uh, a question and that question is when to do a larger case. A lot of the times patients come to us and they have very specific requests, they have very certain specific areas of the scalp that bother them and they say, hey, I want to fill these areas. And typically what we tell them is, sure, we can do that, however, it may be advantageous for you to actually do a little bit more, uh, to do a larger case. So um, because this is something that we commonly see and it's kind of an important topic to cover, we're going to use this patient's uh, presentation as a good example of this. So let's jump right in and go through his case. This patient is a gentleman in his late 20s who came to me and said, look, I have a recession in the corners. I want to fill it. Didn't mention anything about it anywhere else. Uh, I told him, I see what you're saying. I completely understand. Uh, we can fill the recession in those corners. However, as I'm combing through, I see a few other things here that lead me to believe that you may have more loss and you may be better suited uh, with a larger procedure. So that is what I told him and here you can see the last of his images. Okay, so as you saw there, uh, when that patient first came in, just a little recession in the corners, you know, and I told him, like I said there, we can do that, no problem. That's what he presented with, that was his chief complaint. Um, and I told him if you just wanna fill the corners, it's maybe a thousand grafts or so, 500-ish per side. But I told him, uh, look, I, I think, and I see this a lot, if we just fill in those corners, um, I believe because of your age, because of, of some miniaturization that I see throughout the rest of that frontal scalp there, I think if we fill in those corners now, within a shorter period of time, and it's hard to say how short that would be, but within a shorter period of time, you're gonna start to thin in these other areas and you're going to start to have a bit of an unnatural appearance. You're gonna have these little islands of transplants with thinness kind of around them, and you're gonna find yourself coming back requesting another procedure pretty quickly. I see this a lot. I see patients that go to outside clinics. They tell the outside clinics, this is what I want. They do it without any sort of uh, maybe counseling, and they come back to see me sort of frustrated because they're already doing another procedure. And at that point in time, what I tell them is, look, what I would have said is do a larger foundational procedure now. Let me give you a bad haircut. Let me trim up carefully with big magnifiers and small tools work through these areas that are thinning that way when they do fall out in the not so distant future you're not left in the situation and you've got a procedure that's going to hold you off for a longer period of time so that's basically what i told this patient um, and let's jump in now and look at sort of the preoperative planning based on what i had told him and uh, some images from the surgery itself okay so here was the plan so not only were we going to rebuild his frontal band He'd always had a little bit of a widow's peak curved hairline shape. I said, I think that's great. That's appropriate. It's going to age well. So we were going to do that, but we were also going to trim up that central tuft there and really work all the way back to the mid scalp. I told him this is going to be about 3000 grafts. Um, I, I know that sounds huge compared to what we're looking at here, but I think that's what you need to do. I think that's what's going to serve you best in the long term. So what you'll see here in a moment are uh, intraoperative images showing the slits. So you can see we did a big one here. That's, that's a lot based on the loss he had, or it seems like it is. And then here are a few post-operative images. We actually ended up doing 3,200 grafts, big surgery, FET surgery, big surgery, very pretty surgery. And this is how he looked immediately after. Okay, so as you can see there, that was a big surgery. Um, I, I, some viewers right now may be looking at me like I have two heads because that seems like a lot of grafts to use in that area. But like I said before, um, you know, we, we have to, to sometimes look a little bit into the future and, and, and tell ourselves that this is going to continue thinning. You know, if, if genetic male hair loss is, is one thing, it's progressive and it's unpredictable. So we need to assume that area was going to thin. Um, we, we needed to be careful and make sure that we could safely work through it, and I did. I trimmed it all up. I only worked very carefully where I could. And in the end, it looked gorgeous. Like I said, 3200 graft case, that entire frontal half ish of the scalp was totally solidified and he was happy. 
So patient went along his way. Uh, I next saw him 12 months, a year after his surgical procedure, his 3200 graft FUT. So what I'm gonna jump into now is some video from uh, his follow-up 12 months later. Okay, so here we go. So initially you can see just boom, you know, big nice poof of hair, looks fantastic. However, remember that he also had a lot of hair before. So this isn't the most fair pound for pound comparison, but I just wanna show you, it just looks great. Nice, big, full, thick result. Um, you know, anybody who saw this guy walking down the street would think, oh, the guy is an enviable, you know, excellent head of hair. But this is the type of result that really calls for our wet, you know, comb through. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna wet it. I actually had to wet it twice to really get the comb through it, which is always a compliment. But here we go. Wet that hair, slick it back. Let's see what we really did there. So as you can see, just boom, beautiful, awesome, love it. This uh, is obviously a combination of both transplanted and native hair, but this is what we wanted. We wanted to work through everything so when he does thin, it's still gonna look like this. He's not gonna just have two pretty corners there with you know thinness in between it. Um, a few other things worth mentioning, love the hairline height and shape work for his case specifically. This is also another one of those good examples of a of a high contrast between the hair color and the skin tone, but it working well. And this is also an example of one pass density. So very, very pleased all around. Last thing we'll show here is his uh, linear scar because this was an FUT procedure. As you can see, nice little scar, uh, probably less than a millimeter or so. Uh, it's still a little pink, it's still healing, but great little scar, exactly what we shoot for. Okay, so as you can see, uh, mission accomplished, you know, a year after the surgery, when it, when all of that that bad haircut and you know that post-operative appearance is gone, as you can see, he just has this nice, big, thick, uniform appearance in the front. Now, if he was never going to lose that hair in the, the the middle sort of central tuft there, if he was never going to lose that hair, and I just did the corners there, you know, it would be a similar result. If he was a guy in his late 50s, let's say, instead of a guy in his late 20s you could get away with that. If I had just done those corners, I believe the 12 month follow-up would not have looked like that. The 12 month follow-up would have looked like good stuff here, you know, thinness, maybe some complaints, something going on there. And I would have had to tell him, look, we probably should have worked through that at the time of your first surgery. So now we have to jump back in. What I have found almost universally is when it's appropriate, doing these bigger foundational procedures typically leads to happier patients. Uh, it's not fun, you know, for people to constantly submit themselves to surgical procedures. It's a lot of work. Um, if you're going to do it, you might as well try to knock out as much as you can at once, you know, give yourself the longest amount of time between procedures. So many times that is what I recommend to patients. And if you come in for a consultation and I recommend that to you, you know, please don't look at me like I have two heads. I assure you there's a method to my madness. Uh, this is a good example of it. Uh, also keep in mind though, just one quick little thing here. A bigger procedure is not always the answer. You know, shock loss uh, and, and causing damage by trying to work through hair that's too thick is a real thing. Um, so we don't always want to do a bigger procedure. So I assure you that, you know, if you do come here, we're only going to recommend a bigger procedure when it's appropriate and when I know I can safely work through the other areas without causing damage. But um, hope everyone watching enjoyed the video. I think it was a great case. Uh, hopefully it was kind of an interesting little, uh, little theme for our video as well. Uh, as usual, thank you guys so much for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching these videos. Uh, we truly love making them. Uh, it seems like you guys are truly enjoying watching them, so we'll keep doing so. As always, I am Dr. Blake Bloxham from Feller & Bloxham Medical, and we will see you guys in the next one.